Welcome to Absolute Basics, the beginner's course here on bettersheets.co. Thanks for watching. This is actually very basic and very in-depth on what a spreadsheet is. In other words, this is a beginner's guide to spreadsheets. If you've never used spreadsheets before and you're wondering what are rows, what are columns, what's a cell, this is a good course for you. In the last third of the video, I do go through a couple of things about column widths that if you have known about spreadsheets, you might not know, like double clicking on the column width. That's a really fun thing to know and do really quickly. And some people who use Google Sheets for a long time don't know about these kinds of little tips and tricks inside of Google Sheets. So stick around. And also, it's very good to have the fundamental basics as we get better and better at Google Sheets and spreadsheets. Sometimes we lose the fundamentals of spreadsheets. So I did this course, I actually made these three videos that make up this course that you're about to see. Um, at a time in which I thought, oh, I know a lot about spreadsheets. I've been working on spreadsheets and Google Sheets for five years in a company where I was making like $75,000 a year. I know a lot about Google Sheets and I know all this stuff. And going back to the basics, it was fresh for me. It was refreshing. It helped me understand Google Sheets more, even advanced as I was in using formulas and uh, scripting as well. Um, going back to the fundamentals was incredibly refreshing for me. I hope you enjoy this set of videos. If you are an advanced person in Google Sheets and you're gonna watch this and you're just gonna like put it on in the background, if you learn anything new, comment down below what you learned for the others that are watching that are absolute beginners and are like, I don't know any of this. Let them know, hey, this is really cool stuff and keep going. Enjoy this set of videos, uh, this course on the absolute basics of Google Sheets. This video is all about the basics, the absolute basics of a spreadsheet and Google Sheets. So when you create a new sheet uh, or spreadsheet, um, it's going to have sheets in it. It's going to have one sheet, actually. It's going to look like this. It's going to have a table, and you have a number of sheets inside of this spreadsheet, and each one of these sheets is a table. The table is cells, which are ordered in rows and columns. Every new sheet that you make it's going to have 26 columns and 1,000 rows. Uh, we know this because if we go all the way over to the right, the column is labeled Z. So all the columns are labeled as their uh, letter. But if you don't know what uh, number this is, like you can say how many, how many columns do we have, well, one easy way to find out is to do a little equals column and then parentheses and parentheses, and that'll give you the number of the columns. So you can even copy paste this and you can see. So sometimes you might not remember what number U is. It's the 21st letter of the alphabet and it's the 21st column in a spreadsheet. Every new sheet you make, you can click uh, over here on the plus sign and create a new sheet. It's gonna be named uh, sheet and the word sheet and then a number. Uh, it'll be after whatever number you have, so I've made this video a couple times and you can see it uh, says 14 here. Uh, wherever you are in the sheet, in the tabs, it'll create a sheet right after it. So you can see right here, number 16. So these are all out of order, right? Because it, it's just adding wherever I am, it's gonna be adding after that. So what can you do in cells? Well, in cells you can do four things. You can write text, you can do math, you can combine that text in some funky ways, and then you can also do formulas. Uh, I'm going to show you text right now, so you can write any text, and it's going to look like that when you originally do it. It'll be Arial default 10 uh, font size. It'll be black. Um, I have some other videos that are really cool about how what to do to make your initial uh, sheets better, so you can go and check out those videos they include things like changing the text to uh, hashtag uh, 4444 that's like a lighter black that's not so contrasty and then also using something like uh, sheet.new to create a new sheet uh, really quick productivity things to make your life easier but back to what you can do in cells so you can write any text you can also do math and in order to do math you have to use the equal sign then you can do like 34 plus 56 you can also do 45 times 34. And that's 90, that's 1530. You can do division, 
divided by that. If it's a funky number like that, you can easily go up, come up here and click the percent format as percent sign right here, and you get percentages. And you can combine text. So here's like a really simple way without any formulas or anything to combine text. So you go equals, and you put in quotations. You go any, and then you want to combine that. You go and text, and you'll see it is any text. So you can use the and sign. You can also put a space there, or you can do space and that. Uh, but you might run into problems if you try to do, use something other than an and sign. You might want to try like a plus sign, and you're going to run into a problem. This is uh, an error whenever you get hashtag value. Uh, and it says error. If you, if you ever um, get an error, you can always uh, roll hover over the cell, and it'll give you It'll explain what it is. In this one, it says that function add, uh, which is the plus sign, parameter one expects number values. So you want a number here, but you add text. But any is a text. It's, it literally says that any is a text and cannot be coerced to a number. So it's actually trying to think, is this a number? Um, let's see it, what happens when we use numbers. So this actually, when you use in quotation marks numbers, it knows, oh, that's a number, and it's going to change it. Um, so it doesn't give you a uh, error if you use an and. See, 1 and 2 become 12 because it's really just combining those things. So um, if you ever get an error, just hover over. You can, that'll be hashtag name. That's an error. It says just unknown. It's like, what is this? And now you've already been introduced to formulas. They always start with equal sign. And then you can do something like sum. If you want to add up, say, 45, comma, 67, 76, 67, end parentheses. They'll always have the name of the formula or function. Actually, Google calls them functions. Uh, then the parentheses and then some amount of arguments. If you ever need help and you don't have this helper um, information, maybe it's closed, you have this question mark next to it and it says turn on formula help. You can click that and you have a little uh, description of what that formula or function does. Uh, so what does that do? It actually sums up or adds up all of those numbers. I'm not going to get into all of the functions out, but I will share with you some really fun ones that um, like average is a good one. Um, why? Because what you can do in them, you can absolutely go 7300. You can put the numbers here and you'll get an average, great. But you can also refer to other cells, which means that you don't have to type the number inside of the equation or the formula, and you can actually do this with, without formulas. Let's do, let's do it without formulas first. Let's go equals, we do 90 plus 1530 gets us 1620. See, we didn't have to, this doesn't need any fancy formulas, we don't have to write in add some, Anything, it's just the plus sign. Uh, we can also do minus. We can also do times. And you have those two arguments, or cells, are now referred to in this cell. But you can do the same with sum. Let's get rid of that helper. And you can do this range. So you can do that, or you can put a comma here, if it's only two, if it's like three, G6, you can say, okay, that's the sum of all three, or you can put a colon here and go G4 colon G6 gives you everything, G4 and G6 included, everything in between, and you can sum those up. What's cool about this too is it's a relative, there's relative and there's absolute. It's a relative referral to the cell, so it means if I copy and paste this, it's actually going to change the um, the range. So see, it's now G5 to G7, and this one is G4 to G6. So as I copy and paste that down the line, it's going to change the formula because it's relative to what this is. If you want to, this is the biggest thing I'm going to reveal right now, um, and I'm going to get the, into this again in other videos because it's one of the coolest things in Google Sheets, is if you want to hold this and you want to say, okay, I want this sum, but I want to sum the same exact uh, place. All you have to do is in front of the G, whatever you want to do, hold, you put a dollar sign in front of. So you can do dollar sign G, dollar sign four, 
dollar sign G, dollar sign six, and now everywhere I copy and paste that, it's absolute reference to the range. Isn't that cool? You can also choose which ones you want to hold. If I want to hold just the columns, like G, I can delete the dollar sign in front of the four and the six, and now if I move it up and down, it'll change, but if I move it left and right, it won't change. Watch this. So that doesn't change, but that doesn't change. That doesn't change the G. It only would change to the four and the six, but it actually held the G. So this one's fine. So we can move that all around and see how it's changing up and down, but it's not changing left and right. That's really cool. So you get relative. Normally, if you just use a cell, you have relative. If you put the dollar sign there in front of the column and or the row, then you're going to have an absolute reference. So that should be fun. Um, this was an absolute basics, and that should get you going. If you've never used Google Sheets before, go ahead, create a new Google Sheet, sheet.new, and enjoy just messing around, add some text, try some formulas. What's one of the most fun things, if you've never done it before, just type in equal and go through the alphabet and check out all the kinds of different things you could do. You would cosines, and you, can, you there's I think there's something for every single letter of the alphabet. Yeah, even Q, J, join. J, join is the only one. Oh, join so much fun. Um, go ahead and enjoy. Now you can use Google Sheets in all of its glory. Bye. Hello, welcome. Uh, this video is gonna seem really basic to a lot of people, but I hope for those beginners who are just getting into Google Sheets for the first time, this will be incredibly helpful. I'm gonna tell you what the structure of a sheet is, how to like unlock that, and some really fun things I like to do with these three formulas, index, row, and column, and I'll get into them as quickly as I can. So uh, a sheet, Whenever you start a new sheet, it has 26 columns and 1,000 rows. Um, you can use row and column to find out which row or column the cell that you're in is on. Uh, this is incredibly useful because I've used it for like basic math. I've used it to reference other pages. Uh, if you set up, say, a templated tab, um, you're doing accounting and you know like, okay, I'm going to put the summary in the, in the you know, top A1, you can always reference that by using A1, but you can also reference it by going to index and row one, column one. Um, index is a fun, fun um, formula that you can use to basically find any particular cell at any particular place that you know how many rows and how many cells it is. Um, here, I'll, I'll, I'll go into this, actually I'll show you here. So let's start, we're gonna get to this in a second. So row, so if I do equals row, this is going to be two because it is on the second row. Here, uh, nine equals row is on the ninth row. You think like, okay, that's that seems silly, right? Because you're on the ninth row. You can see two here. You can see two here. Well, sometimes I want to like do some really quick like cubed math. Like I just want all the cubes or I want to do like some really quick number problem but I know I want to iterate through numbers. I use this in business models all the time to like show like movement. Um, here, we'll go ro equals row and we want to do like times, I don't know, 10. Just want these numbers. So I go through that, copy paste here. Now I have the numbers 10 through 110. I can do times 45, put that all in there, do it times 88, 858. Oops, do times 855. Now I have some pretty big damn numbers here. Can for format them into different cells like this. This is really fun to be able to do some really quick math. And column is exactly the same way. You can go equals column, C-O-L, so I can do just C-O-L, and it automatically goes into column, and B is two. This is actually a really good way to find out what um, what number these these columns are because who knows you what is the actual number of m and what you have to remember that it is the 13th 13th letter in the alphabet so this is really good especially if you have like 
hundred columns. Um, this is really cool. So now we know we can get the row, we can get the column, we can add these together. We can find out this is column, we can concat the row and the column. We can concatenate the row and the column here. And that's not 32, that's three and two. So let's do this. So let's do equals concatenate, concat. An eight. Let's do row, comma, row, comma. Let's do put a space there, column, colon. There. And so now we have row and column. And there we now can look at this. I'll take this, scrape it around here. Here, now we know every single position. So we can say, okay, row one, column one, row four, column four is here. Uh, if we want to get this uh, row four, column four, how would we do it, right? We can do D4, right? We, we would remember, okay, D4. But sometimes, like, we don't exactly remember the letter. We might say, like, we want the hundredth row or we want to range from here to here, and we just might not remember. Or this kind of range or the, whatever we're looking at, whatever data we're looking at might move around. How do we figure out what's in the, the, the top left corner or the, the, the second column in the first row? Well, we use index for that. We can do index. And we can say reference A1 to E11. Okay, that's the whole range. And we want 1 and 1. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get from that the, the contents of the cell over it in this range. What's at row 1, column 1? Well, it, says, it says row 1, column 1. We can change these numbers around 4, 4, 5 and get exactly row 4, column 5. Well, we can also move this range. We can say, okay, let's start at B2, B2, and go to E11. Now, what's going to happen is if that column and row number is outside of the realm range, it'll tell you that. So let's do 2, and 2, and it's going not from the top of the sheet, but actually the top corner of the range that we put in, which was B2. So it's going from B2, it's saying, what's... Two across and two down. Well, it's row three, column three. This is really cool if you're moving stuff around, if you have different ranges and you want to move it around. But you can also take these numbers out and reference other cells. So I did that over here. So here we have index C to E, and we're referencing, well, the row is going to be whatever's in C16, whatever's in C17. And now we have our row and column outside, and we can move it around. And see, this is changing here. So in essence, index will get you uh, the contents of the cell at any point that you know the row and the column. Row will get you the actual row the cell that you're in is on. Uh, column will get you the number of the column, and it's incredibly useful because currently the, the columns are letters. And who knows what number is A, X, or B, Q. We don't know, but we can know if you grab the column use the column equation or formula inside of a cell. Bye. Hi, this video is to go over five different ways to change the row height. Um, why are we going to change the row height? Well, uh, one of the reasons is just aesthetics. We might want to uh, give some more white space, but also um, you might want to prepare your sheet. Like if you know some sort of numbers and some mathematical styles you want, um, I'll share with you one of these ways where you can very quickly and easily uh, change it to your very saved expectations and specifications what you want. So that's two reasons why. Um, but you're going to run into a lot of way. Uh, I'm going to give you five ways to change it, and every single way has different use cases uh, that you might want to use. So, like for instance, you could just change the um, font size. So if I just change the font size here let me do this i've already showed you all the ways but if you this is the default if you have a row here and you change the font size by default the row will get wider um this is probably the most inherent way or, or less clicking way you're changing the row the font anyways but what's going to happen is you might want to change it more as you change your height
And the other second way you can change it is literally going over to the row, um, the, 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 the little space between the row. Make sure your uh, arrow actually changes from an arrow to an up arrow. And now you can click and drag the row height. And this is a great way to give um, white space to your headers maybe, or even to, to your uh, data. So like give more white space. Then you might even want to change over here, like go to the middle and let your data go into the middle there. So that's two ways. So we've already changed the font size or click and drag. Next way is you can right click or control click on a row and click on resize row. And here we can actually choose the pixels. As you see, it says default is 21 or you can fit to data, which is the so the default is 21 and then the default is we fit to data. But if you know mathematically, I want 30 pixels, you go okay. And now you know what 30 pixels is. You can do the same thing over and over again. You can say for all of these rows, I want it 30 pixels. For these rows, I know I want to set it to 60 pixels. I want these rows to be exactly double these for some reason. Right for different use cases, maybe you want to um, put data here and put different headers up here or information than headers and categories. The next one is something you might already know, but you might have just like figured it out by accident. If you go to the bar between a um, row, between two rows, and double click, it will automatically fit to the data. So even if it's too much, it'll it'll shrink. If it's too little, it'll expand. So if it's too much, and it'll def go to the default. And you can do that. I like doing that a lot because it saves me a lot of clicking, dragging, figuring out what is the right way. I can also click multiple, and it won't do all of them exactly the same. It'll do them each to their own data. If it's blank, if there's a blank one, it'll be set back to the default. So we can see here it should be 21. There you go. That's the default. So that's what it's set to when it has no data in it. And the last way to change the row height is once if you have say two or three rows that you don't want to change the entire row, you only want to change a little bit. So for instance, if you have um, some data in a table that you want to go bigger, but you don't want the entire table to get larger, what you can do is merge your cells. And so something as simple as this can merge cells. And now this row is essentially four times higher than this. And that will get you a, this cell block here is four times higher than any of these. Um, let me see if I can show you better this way, maybe. Hopefully you can see that. And so this row, this column's rows are higher than the other ones. Um, that's a, a really cute way to do it if you have sort of some different types of data you want to share. Um, that was five ways to change the row height. Hope you got something cool out of that. Bye. Hello, welcome. This is another basics video. Uh, just going over something that I think is rather basic, but you might actually find something new and interesting about it. We're just changing the column width. I know it sounds really simple, but there's actually four ways to do it. And I'm going to show you right now. So one is you can click and drag the any of these um, borders of these columns. You can click and drag them and, and change the width. But you can also double click on the right side. So if I want to change the C column, uh, I can double click and it'll automatically go to the longest uh, text. So say you had like a bunch of different different ones here and you can just double click on them. But what's interesting too, here let's undo that. If I, if I select three and I double click on that border, it will automatically make all of them not the same size, but go to the widest possible text in each column. Uh, that's a really easy way to 
One, well, here's two reasons I like this one by double clicking here. One, I find out like if, if I'm working on like URLs and trying to shorten them or something, I can double click this and it'll automatically go to like this really long thing and I know, oh, okay, well, I missed a couple or something. Um, also, what's really good about it is if I know, you know, what the width should be. Um, I can, and they all should be just exactly this, the, not the same width, but exactly the width of the text in them, then I can do that. Um, but most of the time, uh, I really do want to select a few of them and just visually give them all the same uh, width. Uh, that tends to be just visually the most appealing if you give um, all, of, like say you had these three, even though this full name is going to have... Um, more text in it. Um, visually appealing uh, way to do this is just to have a similar width to all of them. It really lines everything up really nicely. Um, and then the other way to do it, oh, this is uh, actually, you just right click and you can go to resize column. So if I'm on a row, it won't work. Um, but if I'm, on a, if I'm on a row, see it doesn't say it says delete row, clear row, resize row, but on a column, I have to select the column and then right click or control click if you're on a Mac without a right click. Um, and here you go, resize column. But then you get this, you get fit to data or you can enter the number of pixels. You'll see here it says default is 100. So if you want double the default, you can type 200. This also works on multiple. So if you do all of these, right click, We'll say resize columns. We'll go, let's double it. Cool. And then they're all doubled. And the last one is sort of a hidden um, user experience, I would say. This, you can copy and paste the column, and you'll also copy and paste the width. So let's do this. Let's make all these shorter. If I copy this and paste it on E, see the column width changes. Um, you can also do something like this. Okay, so if I want to say, say this is like a different um, type of text and it has a bunch of, of information in it, but I don't want to, I, I want the same width and I want it exactly the same way. I don't want to have to go like right click Resize column, okay, that's 61, okay, I can do this, then I can uh, resize column, 61, that's a lot of work, right? That's just for, for just for a width. So what you can do is copy, I'm doing Command C, and then instead of pasting the entire column, you can do right click, paste special, and you can do paste format only. And obviously that'll also bring in the te text information and need like formatting in the cells below it. But also it, it also just pastes uh, the, 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 the width of the cell. So you can actually copy and paste the actual cell uh, this column, or you can copy and then paste only the format. So in a variety of situations, knowing all of these ways to um, change the column width will help you make more be a better visually appealing uh, spreadsheets, especially if you want to make them very um, iconic, like you want to um, um, formulaic, like if you want to say, okay, this column is going to be 50 pixels wide, this column is going to be 200 pixels wide, 4x, and then 800 pixels wide, and it's like, okay, we have three, we have ID number, title, and description, and it's very uniform. Um, that will help you, um, will help someone who's reading the form or reading the spreadsheet understand what's going on. Okay, here's a, a very slim column, here's a very large column. Even um, using different column widths will help you when you're asking for uh, data input. Um, so you usually want to make columns that are wider for inputs that will be longer. Like if you want, say, a longer title or a longer description, make that sell um, much wider. Thanks for watching this entire video. I'm so glad you got through it. I'm so glad that now you're not a beginner, you're intermediate. You're on your way to knowing much more about Google Sheets. Now you're wondering, what else should I know? Here at Better Sheets, I have lots of inspirational videos, lots of uh, videos about sheet improvement. If you wanna see how a sheet would look if someone without my kind of knowledge 
starts it, and then I help make it better. There's also videos that I share of great cheats that I've seen and why they're so great. You can see them here on YouTube. If you are looking to track your progress and just get better at Google Sheets, 1% better, 10% better, 100% better, consider signing up for a membership to bettersheets.co. Right now, we have a free membership. You can register and watch 60 videos and track your progress. If you have a specific question, go to the comments below and ask it there. Also consider becoming a Better Sheets member where you get access to over 190 videos as of today. Also tools and templates that you can use immediately. Tools that help you make better sheets, faster sheets, and even sell sheets. If you ever want to create sheets on your own and get into advanced stuff and do it for others, you can become a Better Sheets member and be able to sell Google Sheets. Thank you for watching. Don't make any sheets. Make better sheets.